Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Start with our, our first set of afternoon talks. Um, uh, very exciting for me. These next two talks both focus on areas of, of implementing um, support for dynamic languages um, on the, the CLI. And this is not only near and dear to my heart on the merits, but also it's very gratifying having just returned from the Microsoft Professional Developer Conference that was held in Los Angeles last week. Um, clearly, the internal interest within Microsoft for dynamic languages, as you've heard from Joel, the focus of Joel work, Joel's work and um, Jim Miller's comments as well, is really an area that's, that's taking shape to be a, a focus area for the common language runtime going forward. So this work is really timely and I think augurs really well for um, places where Microsoft is investing its own critical thinking and engineering effort. So with that said, I'd like to uh, introduce <coughs> Fog, um, excuse me. <laughs> I'd like to choke and die up here. Um, Fabio Mascarenas um, from PUC Rio um, in Brazil. Um, he's a PhD student there. His focus is in the area of dynamic languages. Hello. Uh, Roberto Jerusalemski is my advisor, and this is joint work with, with him. Uh, this is a, a continuation of previous, previous work on the first uh, rotor RFP, where we we did a, a Lua compiler to the CLR. Lua is a scripting language with a, uh, some, some interesting features, such as uh, coroutines, first class functions. <coughs> and with, with this, this compiler, we achieved uh, pretty good performance, it's uh, pretty much the, the same uh, performance as the, the, the Lua interpreter, which is very good because the Lua interpreter is very fast. And in more recent tests, we, we achieved the, the similar performance to Iron Python 2. Well, the, the, the compiler also achieves good integration with, with the rest of the CLR. Lua scripts can, can use uh, classes of the, the, the CLR and vice versa. But the, there were some issues with, with the compiler. The first one is the, the implementation of, of coroutines is inefficient because we had to use threads and synchronization. <clears throat> we also couldn't implement the, the, the correct, correct semantics for weak maps. <clears throat> and the, the, code, the code generation need, needed for integration with the rest of the CLR is, is heavy. You have to, to generate classes on, on the fly. Then, then the new version of the CLR has, has has lighter weight code generation, but the, the other two issues remain. So we decided to work on that for Rotor. Well, first I'll talk about the, the implementation of, of coroutines. Coroutines are basically lightweight threads that, that do not have concurrent execution and when you want to, to switch context between coroutines, you do that explicitly. You transfer the you, you transfer execution to another coroutine with a function call. Compared to threads, they are easier to to use for a, for a, a programmer because you, you don't have a preemptive context switching, so no risk conditions to worry about. And they also have better performance because each context switch is basically a function call with a chain of the stack. Some applications of, of coroutines are in, in, in producer consumer problems and the implementation of 
uh, generators and, and iterators, <coughs> they, they also use it for event-based programming where event handlers can, can suspend their execution and continue later. And you can also, of course, implement cooperative <laughs> multitasking uh, with them. What we're calling coroutines here are the full coroutines, which are first class uh, objects, and they they can do context, context switches inside uh, functions called by the, the main body of the coroutine. You can do a, uh, you can suspend execution deep inside the, the function, the, the call stack, and continue later in the same point. This is different from the, the new iterators of, of, of the C sharp to, to, Point row, which are, are basically a sy synthetic sugar. Well, well uh, coroutines can come in two, two varieties. The symmetric, symmetric coroutines, <coughs> there is only a transfer operation that switches to another coroutine, and the, the current one is, is suspended. There, are, there, there is no hierarchy among them. And for asymmetric coroutines, there is a resume operation that starts or, or, or continues a, a coroutine, and a yield operation that, that switches back to the coroutine that, that's called resume. So with asymmetric coroutines, there is a, a relation similar to function calling. <coughs> But the thing is, you, you can implement symmetric coroutines using asymmetric ones and, and vice versa. So which with, with one to implement as a basic abstraction is just a, a question of, of convenience of implementation and, and use by the, the programmer. We decided to go with the, with the symmetric coroutines for reasons I'll explain a little later. Well. Using coroutines is, is pretty simple. Uh, we are planning to, we're planning to provide a, a, a coroutine class for, for use by applications. <coughs> you create a new coroutine passing uh, the, the body that will be executed. Resume your starting is this a, a function call where, where you pass the in, in any object that that will be either either pass it to the body of the coroutine when it's it's started, or return it from from the call to yield. <coughs> Yielding is basically the same thing. The difference is that it's a, a static call because it, it it always yields to the coroutine that 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 call uh, resume. And again, you can pass an object that the object passed to you is the return value of resume, and the object passed to resume is the return value of the call to yield. Also, uncaught exceptions uh, propagate up the yield chain. They go to the coroutine that called resume, if uncaught go to the coroutine that called resume and so forth until the, the top coroutine of the application. Uh, this is one, one of the reasons we, we choose asymmetric coroutines, because for symmetric coroutines, this is un undefined, what happens when, uh, when you have an uncaught exception. Well, this is a pretty basic ex example of a coroutine. In this case, one that, that uh, traverses a, a tree in order. This is an interesting example, because this actually uh, uh, requires full coroutines, because the yield, yield call is typically deep inside a, a, a recursive call. <coughs> so uh, defining the, 
the body is pretty simple and using it also you just loop it, do, loop doing a, a resume until it returns new when, when the when the when the core team finishes executing. Well, this the this was this is how you, you use. But what about the implementation issues of core teams in, in Rotor? As I said, each core team uh, needs its own stack. <coughs> when, you, when you suspend a core team, <coughs> you, 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 you switch the, the stack to, to the stack the, of the core team that, that was previously, previously executing. <coughs> It's actually the easy part. There are APIs on on both Windows and, and Unix-like operating systems to to do that. Use Fiber on Windows and U Context on on POSIX systems. There's for for the the CLR. There's the matter of coroutines versus thread local storage. Because uh, the the CLR uses thread local storage to for things like exception handling and and storing the the state of, of the runtime. So you 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 want to to preserve that when when you you switch to when you you switch among co coroutines. One way to, to do that, which the the way uh, uh, an existing implementation of, of coroutines in the CLR uses, is to create a, a logical thread, a, a CLR thread without an, an OS thread for its coroutine, and then you, you switch you you switch lo logical thread at the same time of, of the coroutine suite. But this this is uh, pretty heavy, and you're, you're, it's not just a, a simple function call plus a stack switch anymore. You are, you're, you're now are, are <coughs> you're now are, are switching to thread state also. And there's the problem that coroutines are, aren't are, are not are not really threads. There there are things that that you. You, you want the the core team to in, to inherit from the thread that that called it. <clears throat> you don't want to to change uh, security context, for for example, when you, when you switch to a to a core team. Core teams run inside threads, but they they are not threads. And the the whole interaction of of threads and coroutines when you do this is, is tricky. Things about uh, uh, aborting the, the current thread. <coughs> the, the current, the, the thread state, if it's <coughs> running or, or suspended. And finally, this is pretty much a, a hack on the, on the runtime. Uh, a better way is to add a, 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 a native co coroutine class to the to the runtime where we will store coroutine specific state and switch just just that. And of course, we have to modify the the thread class to to know about about co coroutines. <coughs> Well, another implementation issues, issue is the, the propagation of uncaught exceptions. <clears throat> For this, we can, we can close the, the coroutine body in a try-catch block, and then uh, through the exception again inside resume. And of course, the, this is somewhat sketchy right now because the, the implementation has just started. It, we're just raising this, this kind of issues. Yeah.
there's a lot of, of work to do yet before uh, we have a, a, an actually running implementation in, in Rotor. But uh, we believe it's, it's very doable to, to implement it and implement it right in a way that, that works uh, okay with, with the threading system and does, does not introduce sub to bugs in, in existing applications. <clears throat> About coroutines cur and, and threads uh, specifically, uh, we, are, we are also not, not really sure yet if, if allowing a coroutine to suspend execution in a thread and resuming it in another is, is a very good idea. Maybe we'll end up uh, restricting the, the execution of, of coroutine to the thread where it, it started executing. <clears throat> the whole uh, coroutines were, were, were not, are not really meant to be used alongside with, with, with threads. A better model for concurrency when you use Coroutines is to have coroutines for the, the fine grain uh, thread in concurrency in the application where, where you just need one line of execution and to have concurrent, uh, real concurrent execution for, for several proce processors, for example, you use processes in, in message passing. Well, this finishes it for coroutines. Now the second issue of the, the first slide was the, the weak map semantics that we couldn't reproduce just right in the, in the CLR. And this is actually a problem not just with Lua, but other 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 languages also also have it. Uh, there's an, an error in the slide here. The reference queues are, are for Java and not Lua. Lua has weak maps that cannot be correctly implemented with the CLR as is. Java has uh, Fenton references. There are. Sorry, what is a, a weak map? Uh, a map that can have either that where either keys or values or both are, are weak references, and when 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 either the key or the value is collected, the the, the pair is removed from the the map. This is the actual the actual thing we 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 couldn't implement. There's because the, there's no callback mechanism in the in the CLR where you can we can know when and when a, a weak reference b becomes invalid. You, you can know it by by polling, of course, but the, it's not really efficient the, this way. The phantom reference of Java are like weak reference, but they, 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 you can't actually uh, get the, the object from, from phantom reference. They are used only in, together with reference queues. The reference queues are, are, are queues where in a weak reference that is, is about to be finalized is put in a reference queue. And you, you can wait on, on the queue to be notified of when a weak reference is about to be, to be finalized. Python also has weak maps like Lua. And Python also has pair instance finalizers where you can, you can attach a finalizer to a specific instance instead of to all instances of, of some class. <coughs> These weak maps are, are, are useful for, for several things. One of them to implement property tables for objects where you can, 
where you, you can store the, the object in a, in a weak key, a weak reference to the object as a key, and all other properties you want to assign with it in the, in the value. Phantom references and, and per instance finalizers are useful if, if you want to know that an object is, is due to, to be finalized. But you do not want to actually implement finalize in the, in the class because finalize adds a, a, a big runtime cost to all instances of, of that class. It changes the, the whole way that the objects of, of the class are, are collected. So we, we plan on extending the, the rotor garbage co collector to add uh, uh, per instance callbacks, callbacks similar to the, to the Python callbacks of three types two unreachability callbacks that are called when, when an object becomes eligible to, to finalization. They can either allow, allow resurrection of the object or not. Uh, if they don't allow resurrection, they're pretty, pretty lightweight. Just run the callback and can, can collect the object after running it. <clears throat> if you allow resurrection, it has to be treated the, the same way as if this object had, had a class finalizer. And finally, there's a post-collection post callback that can, can be useful in some applications. Obviously, that callback will, <coughs> could, uh, will not have any way to to pass information about what object uh, act was, actually, was actually finalized, but it's useful for implementing weak maps. You can, we can know through a, through a callback like this that one object of the map was finalized, so you can, you can go, go through the map and throw away references that are not pointing anywhere. <clears throat> well, when you have those callbacks, you can implement the reference queues uh, pretty, pretty trivially. And as I said, we can also implement weak maps. Uh, another thing we are thinking about uh, implementing are transparent to weak reference, which, which are those? It's a way to tag any reference in the runtime as a weak reference without needing to, to, to wrap the reference inside a, a weak reference object. <coughs> but uh, still have not uh, analyzed the, the impact of a, of a change like this in the, the runtime. Well, final remarks. As I said, this, this work due to some, some problems we have started pretty much <coughs> a few, few months ago. And results are, are still about six months away. We hope that change for, for working with the, the next version of, of Rotor should, should be minimal, because in, in six months it, it will probably be, be coming out. And after these are, are done, we also plan to update the, the Lua compiler to take advantage of, of the new features. So all this is uh, pre pretty much the point of the, the exercise. Well, this is my contact information if you, if you have any, any, any further questions. Okay. Joel? I've got a couple of fun questions. So the, the reason for the callbacks is 
um, so I, I'm trying to kind of grasp what you're doing here. Mm -hmm. So you have this in associative arrays, yeah. which is your table. Yeah, yeah. And you have a key and a value in that. Yeah. And the, the reason for the callbacks is if, one of, if you have a weak table that supports both um, weak references for both the key and the value, mm -hmm. then you want to be able to tell whether or not, say, the value goes away, so then you can then take away the key. Yeah, yeah. OK. Yeah, when the value is, is collected, you, you, you remove the key. Yeah. And if the key is collected, you remove the value. Okay. <clears throat> How come the value gets collected if you've got it in huh? your table? What? It's still a weak reference. Yeah, weak reference. It's a, it's a table that stores uh, weak reference. You, you, can, you can do it with a, a, a regular table, but you don't have the, this behavior of, of removing the strong element of the pair along with, with added, the weak one. You've added weak references. What? The CLR, the, the CLR has, has weak reference. But the weak reference does does not uh, have any way of okay. and does not have any any callback that tells that it became invalid. Is that good? Um, but you had a suggestion for a, a weak reference or a, a finalization that didn't do resurrection. Mm -hmm. What guarantees that it doesn't get resurrected? No, this this is. This is an, an, an open, open question we, we did not address yet. But uh, I think it, it would be an interesting, interesting thing to have. Uh, uh, the reason we didn't implement it was we saw no way to restrict it so that it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so. uh, a question on coroutines. Do you have any scoping issues? with coroutines, like, I know Lewis supports true lexical scoping, so is there any... A problem with coroutines in, in lexical scoping? No, no. The, the, hmm? In the implementation? No, no, the, there's no problem. The, <clears throat> in, Lua, in Lua, the body of the coroutine is a function, mm -hmm. and it has a reference to the, to the, the actual up values it, it has. It, it, it can reference another stack. That, that's not the, the core stack, but the reference are, are, are direct. The so it points back to the, the stack? Yeah, yeah, it points yeah. back to the. So how do you achieve that? I mean, having pointers back into the stack isn't verifiable in the CLR. Is it just unverifiable code? or? Mm, ah, you mean how we, we implemented yeah. values in, in the Lua, well, in the Lua compiler? Kind of the follow-on question. Oh, the, the, the Lua compiler does not use the, the, the CLR stack for its, its, local, ah. its local variables. It has a, it keeps a separate stack. I see. And so what's the performance implications as a result of that? Of this? No, the, the performance is, is pretty good. Very good. Uh, every every, every local there's obviously there's a, a promise hit because every local access becomes uh, in a in array in indexing. But in the in our in our test, uh, we found it, it to be satisfactory. There's a, a, a I have a, a, a prototype there there that uses a. a a mixed, mixed system where, where, where local variables that are, are not used by, by inner functions are kept on, on CLR locals and up values are, are kept in arrays, but uh, I, I did, not, did not do the performance tests on this yet. Your native, uh, native Lua interpreter always did that indirection for the variables anyway, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. why you don't see a performance difference between your native and the and compile. Yeah, yeah, we, as I said, the, the result with having a, a, a performance uh, similar to the interpreter is, is, is very good for, for us because the, the interpreter is very fast. It's, it's about uh, three times faster than the, than the Python interpreter, for, for example. So, 
so the, it's, it is it's actually very good. Do you have some numbers for co-routines? You said they were inefficient. How, much, how inefficient are they? Oh, I didn't measure. They, they're, they're pretty... Compared to the to to Lua coroutines, the the results are, Lua coroutines are, are are very very lightweight. The Lua, Lua does not use the 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 C stack either. So coroutines in Lua are, are a piece of, of stack located in the in the in the heap and. and a coroutine transfer is, is a function called in, in Lua, basically. Uh, naive question. How frequently are coroutines used in Lua? Is it just like a function? They, they, are, they are various. Lua does not have a threading. Okay. So the coroutines are, are, are the, the, only, the only threading mechanism in the, in the language. And uh, as Lua is... is is used is very used in, in, in game uh, programming. One one use of coroutines is to to have a, one coroutine for each object in the in the in the game. It uh, it active object that that you have. So they they get used uh, a lot, and also. Uh, uh, the implementation of, of, of iterators and, and, and generators in Lua uses the core things. So the Lua core can be similar to the way core can be for Ruby? For basic iteration, and things like that, we normally use uh, uh, Compared to, to Ruby, yeah, Ruby, the, as far as yeah, Ru Ruby has has threads, but uh, uh, it also uses coroutines. Yeah, yeah, actually, but uh, Ru Ruby has a, a scheduler and it it, it preempts its its threads. Lua Lua does not have preemption in, in the coroutines. The oh, from just comparison and how coroutines are used in the two languages. Mm, no, no, we don't we don't have this information. Thank you. Uh, you had a question? You, you already answered it. Thanks very much ah. for, for Joel. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? No? Okay, thank you. Well, thank you.